All right. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. My name is Peter Marchese. We're going to be going over the next generation of BIM 360. Now, just a couple of quick things. Everyone's going to be on mute for the duration of the webinar. I'll be keeping an eye on all the questions in the chat window, so if anything does come in there, I'll try to either address it during the presentation or at the end for Q&A, uh, hit anything that I haven't touched on at that point. So, a little introduction. <coughs> so, this is Microdesk. So, we are an AECO consulting firm. We've been around since 94. We have 12 locations across the U.S., and we actually have our, off, our location in the U.K. as well now. And our staff is comprised of over 160 technical specialists. That's not including sales or you know, back office. We actually have a large team of technology people that can work with you on your projects. And we all come from the industry. Uh, myself, I came from the architectural industry, and I worked there for about 10 years before moving into consulting. So we have a very good background of not just how the technology works, but how it's actually used for real projects. And as part of that, we offer different kinds of consulting services. So for building information modeling, we help with actual model creation, setup, analysis, uh, management. We also have an application development staff on the team. So if there's customization that needs to take place, we can actually create that. Now, for today's presentation, this is going to be delivered by myself. Uh, I'm the senior technology evangelist at Microdesk, which basically means I get to play with all the new and emerging technologies and then find out if they're actually useful or if they're just something cool. If we find that they actually are beneficial, they help with productivity, they help with workflows, we put together the actual process and then train our staff as well as our clients in their usage. Now, today's presentation, we're going to be doing just a basic overview of BIM 360, just to get everybody on the same uh, playing field. And then we're going to be going over the new next-gen versions of those tools. So this would include docs, design, glue, and build. And then we'll go over a little bit of how you can actually access this and where things are going. But before I get rolling, I just want to ask the audience a couple of questions just to get a better idea of who's watching and I, and I can tailor some of my examples to what you need. So first one is going to be, what is your role? Okay. Then uh, next one, and don't worry, there's only three of these. <laughs> Are you currently using BIM 360 services? Alrighty, good mix of, of users, both current and past. And the last one, are you currently using any cloud or mobile technology for your projects? And good, good mix of use here. So ho hopefully we'll convert some of the no's after uh, this presentation. All right, so what we're going to be talking over today is the next generation of BIM 360. So what that means is that if you've been using BIM 360 the last few years, those are in many respects referred to as the classic apps. Now, in general for BIM 360, the things that have been really pushing this forward are basically the setup of urbanization, different BIM mandates, and project teams being much more distributed. So we're seeing larger projects be taking place. And as part of that, many of those locations are requiring mandates for BIM. We're starting to see a lot more work, a lot more uh, setup, and a lot more benefit from that BIM data used downstream. And with these larger projects, we're also seeing teams be set up everywhere, not in the same team, not in the same city even, or in some cases, the same country. And that leads us to having an issue where our data is sort of everywhere. And a lot of people are probably familiar with this slide in terms of trying to work out collaboration. You know, you've got the different firms, you've got the different content, you've got different versions, 
And this is just typically on the design side. When we move from design into construction, now you have different models and different data and different setup from there that we need to manage. Now, Autodesk's path through all this. <coughs> so early days, mostly desktop tools. They invested and purchased different programs, Revit being one of them. And they had a couple that were starting to be a little bit more cloud-centric or sharing-centric, like Buzzsaw. From there, they started focusing in around 2010 into a lot of cloud apps or mobile work, ca work cases. And that led to different purchases like Vela, Glue, Horizontal, sorry, Horizontal Glue, Crytek. The problem with a lot of these is that when you're purchasing different tools, they don't always want to talk to each other, which a lot of people found out. And some were able to get better workflows than others. But what they're really focusing on now is something that is a integrated platform. So no more silos is where we're going. So rather than having to upload content to 12 different places to do 12 different things, we have it in one spot, and then we choose what we want to do with it or to it. So it's much more consolidated, much more coordinated, and much more user-friendly in the end run. So you don't have to worry about the IT manager figuring out, you know, where's the latest version. It's just that version. Now, from this, based on data that we have from different reports, this one is according to the Boston Consulting Group, <coughs> companies that have implemented cloud technologies, they've been able to uh, impact project lifecycle costs by 15%. And cutting the construction time by 30% is a huge number on most construction projects, especially when there's a you know, benefit to finishing early. A lot of the times you'll get a penny on that and get a good amount back. So the main benefit here is, again, making things much more simplistic for the end users, much more coordinated for all of the teams involved, and cutting time because we're more efficient. Now, sort of the current or classic overview. We have all the different tools. So we would start off in, say, BIM 360 Team. That would be our design. We'd use collaboration for Revit with that. And then we would move eventually into Docs as we get closer to construction, and then Glue Field and the rest. Now, Team is essentially being phased out, and that's being replaced by BIM 360 Docs. So again, consolidation. We have one location where our content is going to live. From that, collaboration for Revit, Glue, and Field are, I don't want to say being rebranded, but they've been evolved. So C4R is being referred to as BIM 360 Design. So that's our design collaboration module. Glue is referred to as model coordination, and Field is referred to as model management. So what this works out to being is we have four different packages, essentially, for BIM 360. So the platform, it's all built on top of Forge. So we have a single place for our data. It's accessible via additional programming, so we can customize it and do more with it if you need to. And the main thing from BIM, that intelligence, we're able to do analytics and insight on what we're working on. So these four pieces break into four different packages. So you've got Autodesk BIM 360, which leads into BIM 360 Docs. So if all you need is a place to store your content, you've got Docs. If you're doing collaboration, so think the next gen of C4R, that's BIM 360 design collaboration. Model coordination is the next gen of glue, and build is the next generation of field management. All of these sit on top of document management, meaning that if you purchase BIM 360 design, that comes with docs. It's not like you need to purchase that additionally, because every single one of these hosts their content in the same place, and that's going to be on docs. So again, we're getting rid of that issue that we used to have where if you're using the classic version of Field and uh, Glue, you'd have to upload your content twice because they were completely separate. This avoids that. Now, BIM 360 Docs. <coughs> docs has been around for a little while, so I'm going to run through this relatively quick to focus on where a lot of the changes are. But in this case, what I'm looking at right now is the front page of one of my projects. So that project home gives me the information on the address, the weather conditions, if there are issues, RFIs, checklists, other data. Again, it's my home page for my project. I can log in and see what's happening. Where are we with things? What things are past due in terms of all the red due dates there? So I can actually see what's happening with this. Now, from there, 
I'm able to upload and store content and actually view a lot of content. So similar to Team or Navisworks or Glue, I'm able to upload a large amount of file formats. And I can view them, mark them up, put in issues and little push pins on just about all of them. So in this case, what I'm looking at right now are my CAD documents. Now, one of the new features that a lot of people might not be aware of is that inside of 2019, if you're using InfraWorks, that actually uses BIM 360 Docs as its cloud storage for its back end. So if you're sharing Revit files, AutoCAD files, InfraWorks files, Docs actually works for that. And if I'm trying to have a model in a simple location that everyone can access and work off of, it's not just an architectural or engineering thing now. I can use this for civil work or infrastructure as well. Now, another big one, again, we've got our issues. I can create issues, I can track them, I can export my report there, and I can actually see the status of them and who created them and organize it based on all of it. And not every project uses Revit. So whether we're using Revit, AutoCAD, or PDFs, if I put that content in my plans folder, that will automatically split the sheets out. So that way I can focus on looking at the versioning of the sheet as opposed to just the versioning of the file. So maybe I haven't done anything that changed in my floor plan. That version number won't change as I update new versions, or new files, I should say. And the same thing with the PDF. The PDF can actually pull out via object character recognition, OCR, and it'll read the name of the sheet, name of the drawing, number, all the different fields that I find interesting or important, I can have it pull out. And with each of the things that I'm putting up there, it's able to track the different versions, I can compare the versions, both in 2D and 3D. And I'm even able to download the individual files that were uploaded at that point in time. And one of the big things that a lot of people were asking for when we're talking about, say, collaboration for Revit on Team was those permissions and roles. So when I have things on here, I can say, you can see this folder, but not that folder. You can upload, but not uh, edit. You can only view. So you have a good amount of control as to how people are accessing your project. And I can manage that not just on an individual user base, but also based on the role that they've been assigned or the company that they work for. So if I'm the project manager and we have 200 people on the project, I don't have to micromanage their user rights as long as I can assign them a specific role or company and manage it that way. And additionally, one of the other things that people have been asking for a lot is the ability to access our content from the desktop. So what this means is that when I have my desktop connector here installed, I can synchronize that to my computer. If I'm working in Revit for the BIM 360 design, this makes sure that when I link in a file, like an AutoCAD file, it's in the same location for every single person on the project, regardless of where they are or what company they work for. So it makes sure that we're all on the same page and able to actually share and access that content locally as well as in the cloud. Now, the big thing that they've added recently is our BIM 360 design. So easy way to think of this is as the next generation of collaboration for Revit. Because that really is what it is. It's an evolution. It's not a name change. They didn't just say, okay, we're going to call it something else. They really did modify how it works and give it a lot of the features that people were really asking for. So the content is now based off of docs. So that has changed. We can actually search within it. We can create folder structures. And probably one of the biggest things here is on the far right there, the package review and version control. One of the complaints that people had in the past was that everybody had access to everybody else's files. Now, because of the permissions that I just mentioned and the ability to create these things called packages, I can really manage who can see and when they can see my changes. And I'll show more of that in a minute. So when we're working in here, we have our project folder structure. And essentially what happens is you save your files, you put them in the actual project structure. And then, again, I can control each individual folder. So in this case, you've got several different companies. They might only be able to see their individual company and then the shared folder. So what happens is each team, they work on their own, just like we normally do. I make iterations, I change, and my company can see all of our own versions. 
And then what we do is we say, okay, we're ready to share this with everyone else. We create a package, a submittal almost. Send that to the other crew. They review that, confirm what changed, see what's going on. And the terminology they're using here is called consuming. I'm going to take those changes. I'm going to consume them and make them the current backgrounds for my work. And then they do the same process. They do their own work, and then they submit it back. And what this looks like is you'll be in a project. You can review the models, and you'll see an actual project timeline that shows you what's happening, shows you who's doing what, when they've submitted, what they've submitted. And I can very easily find out what changed from submittal to submittal. So it makes it very user-friendly to actually see what's going on and to track the work. And again, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to type them into the chat or the question box. <coughs> now, on the BIM 360 field side, the next gen of field is, again, cloud-based, just like everything else. But one of the biggest differences here, both for the next gen of field and glue, is that it's built on the back end of docs, and it's no longer tied to just being an iPad app. I can use it on the web, I can use it on Android, as well as iOS. So it's much more flexible now. I still have the ability to do all my checklists, but now it's a little bit more user-friendly. It's easier to understand what's going on. I can fill out specific sections of a checklist and submit that, as opposed to having to do the entire thing. Then I can easily get my issue reports based on what's going on and what the status is. And then my daily logs, again, very easy to fill out, all web-based or mobile-based. So it allows me to track my quality control, I can do my safety management, and I can also track submittals now. So if you haven't been following a lot of the things specific to the field side, the RFI tracking and submittal tracking might be new to you. But those are two features that are available to us. Now, the model coordination side is essentially the next gen of glue. So I can upload all my models here. I can easily filter by who sent them, the company, the date, uh, only looking at the models that are my own. And when I do decide to look at the clashes, again, I can filter this. But it gives me a matrix of how all of the models are actually clashing. So what's actually happening is every time you upload a new version of your file into the coordination folder, it automatically runs clashes for you. It allows it to go through and say, okay, these are all the things that I found. And then you can click on one of those nodes, and it actually shows you the results. So from this point, let me actually hop into the software and show you how it works. <coughs> yep. So right now what I'm looking at is my project administration page for one of my BIM 360 projects. I'm able to see the different people on the team, what company they work for, what role they've been assigned, and what levels of access they have. And with the next-gen services, I could manage everyone's access from one location. I can give them rights or take rights away and modify what I need them to be able to do right here. They can also see what companies at an overall level are here and track the different services and set them up. And I'll come back to that in a minute. So when I'm looking at my project, again, I can actually see my heads up here, my different issues that have been created, what packages have been created, and also their status. And navigation is quite easy. So to move from place to place, all I'm doing is I'm clicking on those little nine dots in the square, then I choose which service, based on what I've activated and what I have access to, do I want to move to. So in this case, let's say I wanted to go to field. I'll click on field management. I can look at the different templates that I've created for my checklists. I can see what checklists are set up, what my current issues are, and my daily logs. And again, all of this can be accessed from a mobile device as well. So if I'm on my iPad and I realize, okay, I need to do some inspections today, I click on the little plus symbol, choose which one of these I need to work on. So let's say I'm doing a uh, form removal and curing. That opens it up. 
and then I can see the different pieces here. So certain areas are going to be just text fields where I fill them in. Other ones are going to be ones where I actually have to choose an answer. So there's the label affixed. So I'm going to actually assign this to myself. And I can set a location or set, schedule a date for that if I want. And this actually tracks my completion. So I can see how much more work I need to do. And it's really that easy to run through here and set these up. If I run into problems or if I notice that there's something wrong, I can very easily create an issue, add a note, or take a photograph and add that to the result here. And then all of this can be shown up in a report. Now, the model coordination, again, this is the glue side of things. So and one of the questions I got up here is, will it automatically correct the clashes, or you must do it manually? And this is helping you as an engineer or designer. It doesn't understand a, a, the person's intent. So what it's going to do is help you see the issue, and then you would go back and fix that. So in this case, I'm looking at the different models. I'm going to click on clashes. And I can filter this, so if there's certain models that I'm not too concerned about, I can always remove them from the view. Because in this case, I have electrical, plumbing, and mechanical. Those are three different views of the actual file in there. So it kind of sorts it out. Well, let me take a look at my structural file, and I will click on, let's see here. Look at that one. So this one only had four clashes. Once it loads the models, it will show me the model. And like anything inside of uh, Autodesk Cloud Viewers, I can look at my properties. I can change the settings so I can determine how it looks. I can get measurements, cut a live section. And then when I click on this, it easily zooms in and highlights the issues. This then shows me the individual pieces and allows me to get a better understanding of what my clash is. Again, this isn't going to fix the problem for me, but it's going to allow me to see the problem automatically and very easily get an idea of what I need to do to fix this. And a lot of these services here, you'll notice, they're listed as in preview, so model coordination and the project management. That's because they're continually developing these. So there's going to be much more features coming in the very near future on this. But it's very easy to look at this and get an understanding of what are the problems that are happening? What are the issues I need to be aware of? And it moves very quickly in terms of finding where that issue is and helping me understand exactly what's going on. So this is the model coordination. Again, it's looking at my models here, and I'll explain how that worked in one second. So right now, I'm back in my document management. So any of the views that were accessible inside a field, the models that were being used inside of uh, coordination, they're all placed here. So in this case, I can look at my coordination models, and it tracks those. I can see when they were updated, what version they're in. I can always track that version and compare them as well. And it also tracks things like my PDF files that I've uploaded, as well as my CAD docs. And you notice here that these are two different views of the same file, but the version is not the same. Because some of these files were actually updated and not changed. So it's only showing me where things were actually added or removed or actually changed from version to version. Now, again, the big thing that has just recently been added, though, was the BIM 360 design side of things. That's going to be under here in my project files. I can make whatever folder structure I'd like. I can organize this how I want. But for this specific project, the structure, shared, MEP, and architecture are sort of the really interesting bits. So what I mean by that is that when I look back at my project management, so I'm in my admin, and I click on my document, I'm sorry, my design collaboration. 
what I can do here is create my teams. So these are going to be the different people on the project that are working in, say, Revit, or, uh, Revit to collaborate through the cloud. So in my case, I've just organized them by the discipline. In the real world, you'd likely name them based on the company that's working there, or possibly by the dis discipline or what that role is. I can give it the name of the team. I can manage the path. So in this case, I've got the two admins. That's why their roles are inherited, as well as everybody who works for the architectural firm. For the MEP firm, same thing. Two admins and just the MEP firm. So the architecture firm, structural firm, they can't access that folder. So this creates the different groups that are going to be working on this project. And the name here does not have to match the name on the folder. So I do have control over that. So in this case, if I click on the architectural folder, I can see that I've got the main file and the furniture file. And I can see all the different versions that have been worked on that. I can tell there's a markup and an issue for that architectural file as well. And that Revit file, just going to switch to Revit for a second, that's saved to central, just like we would normal. The only thing that might change for, for some users is when they open the file, they're opening it up from the cloud. So they will click on BIM 360 and then navigate to the actual project. And then based on their user rights and what access they've been given, they'll go to the folder that includes that file. And then they're actually working on a workshare enabled file through the cloud. The really interesting part of this is how you share your files. And that's where this consumed folder comes in. So I'm actually going to switch over to the design collaboration tab. So what happens here is I'm actually looking at the different submittals that have been sent out. So right now I have architecture, structure, and MEP. Each one of these dots is a submittal. I can click on any of these dots, including the ones back there. And that'll actually show me what was included in that submittal package. So I can see the different sheets, the models. I can explore this. And then I can actually ask it to show me what changed from version to version. So in this case, it looks like on this version, they did a little bit of work on the first floor, and they added a lot of content on the second floor at that point in time. I can see, okay, well, what happened here? Oh, it actually moved a little bit. If I zoom in on that, I can actually watch that wall animate from place to place. So rather than just telling me that it moved about a foot, I can actually get an understanding of how did it move from where to where. So it really helps me understand that. Now, the interesting thing here, though, is that I can actually track all of the different submittals. So if I'm looking at this from the MEP standpoint, and normally I wouldn't be able to switch from discipline to discipline or company to company. Because I'm an administrator on this, I can. But I can notice that that circle there, that's hollow. By seeing that that's hollow, that tells me that they never downloaded or updated their background files to the most recent. So the color, the fill, that tells me a lot of information about what's going on. So I can click on this and look at the different submittals. And then I can click on other people's backgrounds. So if I go to the most current time frame, I can see that the architect published another background file. So that doesn't automatically update my links. I have to check it. I can explore it and confirm, OK, everything's good. I understand what they changed. And then I can say consume. Once I hit consume, what that actually does is it updates the content in the consumed folder. So right now, the architect, they're linking in the structural and the mechanical content. Just like the MEP company, they're consuming the architect and the structural content. So you have complete control over the files that you're working from. If, so, if somebody else in the project updates their file, they synchronize the central, or they publish it, it doesn't automatically change what I'm looking at in the background. It only changes when I determine it's time for me to do so. So you actually have a lot of control now, which wasn't the case in BIM 360 uh, Teams. 
Now, a couple of questions have come in on this. So one of those, let me hop back to the web, sorry. If you're reviewing a design and you're looking at that and you wanted to make a comment on that, so that's a good example. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to explore this. I'm looking at the model. And I actually see any issues or problems or other content in here. I can look at this based on the sheets, which again, I can still actually tell it to show changes on. And I can look at it in the model. Now, for this point, what I'm really doing is I'm looking at the actual submittal. I'm not looking at the actual, I say model. If there's something that I need to communicate on, I find a problem or I find an issue on this, what I'm typically going to be doing is go back into my docs, and then I'm actually going to look at that model, whether it's in the shared folder. In this case, any time that something has been published, I'll be able to find that in the shared. And here I can create my markups. I can create my issues, my RFIs. I can also look at all the different sheets or views that have been shared here. So if there's a specific view I want to go to, I can do that. And if there's a specific version that I need to look at to do my markup or to create my issue, I can do that here as well. So if I notice that there's a problem or there's something that I need to change, maybe I feel that that sign is a little bit too low. I can come in here and create an issue, click on that sign, signage needs to be raised, please raise by six inches, and then I can assign that to individual people or to a company. So in this case, let's say that I feel that this needs to go to the architectural firm. So I assign it to the whole company. I say that I need this to be dealt with by Friday, because that's when I need to update my electrical documents. I say create, and now that's an open issue. And the people that are part of that company have just gotten the notification. And you notice that as I orbit around, that issue isn't just floating on the screen. It actually was assigned to the object that I clicked on stays connected to the signage. And it's very easy for me to find any issues. Rather than looking through and trying to find them here, I just click on the issues header. This shows me where all the open issues are, any of the ones that are answered. And then I can create that report that I showed earlier in the PowerPoint so I can get an idea of where we are with things. And if I come in here and I'm wondering, okay, well, what happened here with that clash? Okay, well, lights are clashing with the returns. That's on that document, version number six. So let's take a look at that. And that takes me to that specific version. So there's the issue. There's the clash that was notified. It's easy for me to move around and keep an eye on things. Now, with regards to the folder structure here, a couple of questions have come in on that. When I'm doing my design collaboration, I'm going to hop back over here to my docs. The folder structure here is basically you can start off a brand new project if you're not connecting to any uh, documents as a uh, template or example, you'll have your plans and your project files. You can create what folder structure you would like inside of this. The only thing that essentially happens automatically is that if you create your teams here, so I'm saying I'm going to be using design collaboration, I create my teams, that is going to automatically create two things. It's going to automatically create a folder for that team and that will include a folder inside of it called consumed. And it's also going to create a shared folder where all of the content that is being published, all the packages, can live as well. And this guy has another question. Do all users need to have BIM 360 to collaborate? Now, I'm going to say no to that, but I want to do a caveat. If you're using Revit and you are looking to save your file in the cloud, 
and have other people open and close and access it, then that answer is going to be yes. If you're working with people who just need to send you a file in the background and then download your file and work off of their network, then definitely. So that's really where the shared folder comes in, so that I can actually share that folder so outside consultants can access my content and also publish their own. And then the desktop connector will ensure that, will ensure that I can link that file in and the background location will be correct for everybody. Okay. A lot of questions coming in, which is perfect. Okay. So, uh, one question came in, can issues be copied and pasted? At the moment, no. So a couple of questions are coming in regarding the administration. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to click on those nine dots again, and I'm going to change this from my project content to my account admin content. So this is where I can actually look at my overall setup. I can manage the settings of my account, my admins, my custom integrations, which I'll touch on in a bit. I can get analytics on what's happening, how many projects are happening, where my users are. And again, I can see my overall projects, and I can also add projects as I need them. The great thing here is it's very easy to find them now because I can search. I can also search when I'm moving from host to host. So if you're on multiple projects with multiple companies, it's easy to find. And then I can manage my specific project team here. And if I'm looking to turn on or off services, this is where I would turn them on or off and apply the administrators to them. Now, the nice thing is if you're just the admin for the host, you're not adding yourself to any projects, you actually won't pull a license or seat of BIM 360. Uh, another question here, does the model set up from Revit 19 to BIM 360 Next Gen the same as C4R? So the setup is a little bit different. So that's the part where we go in and we set up the document management. We create our admins and assign who can do what. And then we set up our design collaboration and create the project teams. But from the standpoint of a Revit user, nothing changes. So I'm still working in Revit. I'm still hitting synchronize to central or save local depending on what I'm doing. And the collaborate ribbon hasn't even changed compared to 2018. So the end user, they just keep using Revit. They're just saving it to a different location. We just now have a lot more control over how things are shared and how things work with other companies. Now, next question is, can this work with other versions? So this is where, there's, I'll say a matrix, but if you're using 2018.2 or older, unfortunately, you can only use Collaboration for Revit, which is hosted on BIM 360 Team. If you've upload, updated to 2018.3, that gives you the option to actually work on your project on both Docs or Team. 2019 Revit can only work on Docs. But as long as you're on the latest version of 2018, you'll also be able to move your project onto Docs. So currently there's two versions of Revit that will work with the current next gen BIM360 design. So another question regarding archiving and saving. Now all the files that you do work on get saved to the cloud. Let me switch back to that for a second. And when I'm looking at my docs, I can easily take everything here and download it locally. So I can actually click on a folder. And rename, share, or delete that if need be. I can grab all my content and tell it that I want to actually download that. So I'm in plans, that's why. Go. And that allows me to download the entire thing. The other option that I can do is sort of a drag and drop method because I have BIM 360 uh, desktop connector installed. So in terms of automating that process, 
right now there's nothing that does that from the service itself. But again, if you're willing to take advantage of Forge or customize it, that is something that you can do. A uh, question regarding the old school C4R. Is it possible to migrate to BIM 360? Yes. There's not a migrate button, but it is possible. There's a few things that we can do uh, either via plugins or via the desktop connector to streamline that process of moving content from team to docs, but it's definitely possible. And the main thing is to remember that you can only use 2018.3 or 2019 on the next gen service. So I'm going to hop back to the PowerPoint for just a second because there's a few more things that I wanted to touch on. Now, I mentioned before Forge. So BIM 360 is currently set up on the Forge backend. So it's all customizable. And if you've ever gone to the Autodesk App Store, there's actually a section there just for BIM 360 now. So if there's different things that you want to do to enhance the functionality, it might be there already. One service that's really nice is <coughs> a service that allows me to actually take photographs of my project site. And this can organize the photos, and it also allows the, some of the machine learning tools to auto-tag things. If it sees people there, if it sees hard hats, if it sees safety vests. And if I find a problem with that, I can create an issue that shows up on BIM 360 field. Similar to that, there's another one for, for uh, 3D Robotics that allows me to actually create issues and organize content from site files. So I can fly my site, I can create 3D models from the photogrammetry, I can overlay my project documents on top of it to see the progress and confirm locations. And again, if something's wrong, field issue. So there's a lot of different things that I can do to enhance this process and take BIM 360 even farther than it already is. Whether it's doing it yourself internally with custom content or adding app, uh, plugins and apps to it just like you would for Revit. question that we got over here was, when is it available? Actually, it's already available. <coughs> and the cool thing is, if you already had BIM 360 team or collaboration for Revit, you already have BIM 360 docs and BIM 360 design. So if you have five seats of C4R, you also have five seats of BIM 360 design and docs. So if you already have BIM 360 glue, you have glue next gen. If you have field, you have field next gen. And the nice thing about that is if you have any of those tools, you also now have seats of docs to go with it. So if you have any of the BIM 360 services, you likely already have the next gen. Now let's say you don't have that. <coughs> there are 30-day trials for docs, glue, and field currently. At the moment, there's not one for BIM 360 design, but I expect that will change. I just don't know when. Now, interesting thing here is that if you have the AEC collection, there will be a 12-month trial for docs available in the middle of June. So keep an eye out for that. So if you want to start trying things, and it's only going to be for docs, not for sort of the vertical portions of it, but that's where that will be. And you'll have a chance to take it up for a test drive and see how you can actually take advantage of it. And in terms of where things are going, Autodesk has actually been very good about updating their roadmap. So that's on the Autodesk blogs, the 360 roadmap. And it tells you, and no dates or anything, but it gives you an idea of what they're focusing on. And the other great thing about this is if you're not crazy about that direction or you want to give them specific feedback, they have a whole ideas form that people can post ideas. And the nice thing is the more votes they get, the more uh, visibility they will have for the project teams. So you can post an idea, people can view that and say, oh, hey, yeah, I really wanted that too. The more votes, the more likely it will get pushed in. And because this is cloud-based, we're seeing updates almost every month. So it's not like you have to wait until next year for anything to come along. Yep, so let me hop back into Q&A again. Uh, good question here. Who does Autodesk envision as the likely project team admin or owner? Uh, in a lot of cases, it might be coming down to the building owner or project owner or the construction management team. In some cases where it's more for just the design collaboration, 
it might be the company that needs to take advantage of that. So if currently I have X number of seats of building design, or sorry, uh, the collaboration tool, I'm only using it amongst my team to make sure that my people in three different offices can really collaborate effectively. At that point, I'm the owner of it. But if I'm working on a project that is being run by a construction firm, they likely want to use their host for other things, or maybe the owner wants it so that way they can own and manage the content beyond the life cycle of the construction. So it's, it usually ends up being one of those three, the facility owner, the architect, or the construction firm. But as I think as time goes on and the owners and the construction firms get more into this, it will likely push to being them. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, any other questions coming through? I think I've gotten most of these. Uh, one question, Kevin, are there any changes made to design that will allow more flexibility for shared coordinates? If by more flexibility you mean having several different coordinate systems uh, active at the same time, not to my knowledge, but in terms of being able to share the file and view it, right now the view takes into consideration the shared coordinates, not the project. But that's just a view in the cloud for the packages. Uh, when you link in that file, it's still going to come in based on however you've linked it, whether that's origin or origin or the shared location. Right. Thank you very much, everybody. I really appreciate your time. I just want to let you know we have a couple of other events coming up. The uh, Microdisc Accelerator, we've actually created an internal app, uh, an app internally on, with our dev team for anybody to use, and it's completely free. And it allows you to do a lot of things to help enhance your workflow, specifically on the MEP side, but also just in general. And we'll be going over its use and what it can do for you on June 26th. We also have a couple of different local events. You can find all of these on our website, register for them, and hopefully we'll see you at the next webinar and also at some of our uh, in-person events. And if anybody has any questions moving forward, please feel free to reach out to us. We'll be glad to go over anything that you have, any questions I might have missed here, and do a, per, a specific demo customized for your needs. So thank you very much, everybody. Really appreciate your time. Have a great day.